Hi guys, it's Anara here. Um, today we're going to be doing section 4.2, working with integer exponents. So here's a list of things that we're going to be covering in this video. Um, today's video is a little bit theory heavy, but we do have a couple of examples to solidify all of that theory. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of an exponent review. You guys should have been doing exponents for quite some time now, but in case you guys forgot, we're going to do a small review. Um, so the exponent a to the power of b, a is the base and b is the exponent. Um, all of that taken together, a to the power of b is called a power. So what are exponents? Expo exponents are a tool to write a very, very large number or a very, very small number. So rather than writing 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 we write 20 to the power of 11. And the same way goes for the 3 times 3 times 3. We write 3 to the power of 6 and 5 to the power of 5. So um, this is a small review of the exponent laws that you guys were taught earlier. Um, so x to the power of m times x to the power of n. When we multiply exponents, we add them. When we divide exponents, we subtract them. And then x to the power of m in brackets multiplied by n, we multiply them. And then um, x, y to the power of n, we distribute the n between the x and the y. And the same thing goes even when it's divided. So x, to, x divided by y, all to the power of n, is x to the power of n and y to the power of 9. So you guys can pause the video and go through some of the examples that I've um, left here for you guys. Um, I'm not going to spend too long um, reviewing this just because I know you guys um, are familiar with this concept. Okay, so is zero exponents. Basically, anything to the power of zero is always equal to one. And you guys may know this, but not really understand why. So in this example, basically what we're going to be doing is using the exponent quotient rule to really break it down and understand why anything to the power of zero is always equal to one. Right? So for instance, you know that 10 to the power of 5 divided by 10 to the power of 5 is equal to one, right? But um, if we use the quotient rule and we subtract the fives, so 10 to the power of 5 and the 5 minus the 5, because that's quotient rule, it gives you 10 to the power of 0. And because those two are equivalent, they both give you 1. So here we have um, a negative exponents question, and um, I just thought we could solidify this with an example. So anytime you have a negative exponent, to make it positive, you move it to the opposite side. Um, when I say opposite side, I don't mean of the equation. I mean numerator versus denominator. So if you have a negative in the denominator, you move it to the numerator. If you have a negative in the numerator, move it to the denominator, and it'll become positive. So 1 half to the power of negative 3. Um, you basically just move the 1 half to the power of negative 3 into the denominator. So 1 half to the power of 3. And that is just equal to 1 over 1 over 8, because 1 cubed is 1, and 2 cubed is 8. So we basically just expanded it out. And um, we're going to kiss and flip to make 1 times 1 over 8, which will just give you 1 over 8. Okay, so here we have um, a little question on expressions involving negative exponents. Um, please excuse the um, sneak peek into the question. Um, you know, technology is a little hard to work with. So anyway, simplify 4 to the power of 5 multiplied by 4 to the power of negative 3 divided by 4 to the power of negative 2 multiplied by 3. So what are we going to do? We're going to be using exponent laws. So they have the same base, 4, 4, and 4. Um, so we can just treat it as any variable, so x or y, because it's always the common base, which means we can add them or subtract them, or, I mean, multiply or divide them. So 4 to the power of 5 multiplied by 4 to the power of negative 3. That is 4 to the power of 5 plus negative 3, um, all divided by 4 to the power of negative 2 times 3, because we expand out the brackets. So if we add 5 plus negative 3, we're going to get 4 to the power of 2 divided by 4 to the power of negative 6. 
So 4 to the power of 2 minus um, negative 6 should just give you 4 to the power of 8 because 6 plus 2 is 8 um, and that should give you 65,536. So we have a small little summary of everything we've done today. Um, an integer base with a negative exponent is equal to the reciprocal of the base with the opposite exponent. That, bit, that just basically means any base to the power of negative something will give you, will become positive when you move that exact expression to the denominator. Um, a fractional base with a negative exponent is equal to the reciprocal of the base with the opposite exponent. So if you have an expression and you move that into the denominator to make a positive, once you move that back up to get rid of the one at the top, the b and the a will switch. Um, a number except zero raised to the power of zero is always equal to zero because you can't say zero to the power of zero. It's, you will get into that in calculus and all of these other advanced math courses, but we don't discuss this now. So, when simplifying algebraic expressions involving powers, it is custom to present the answer with positive exponents, um, which is why in the previous questions, we presented the final answer with positive exponents, because that is custom. Anyways, that's the end of this video, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys keep on following through with this course.